family, we all drew pictures. My dad drew, my brothers all drew pictures of what they were building, you know, mainly making things. In 1959, I guess the first time I moved to San Francisco, and uh, began meeting several artists because I lived in a really low rent area. After I was doing graphic art for about probably a year and a half, I came out with the Arwin X poster, which was a self-publishing effort. I did that because I was so upset with the Vietnam War and where our country was headed. It was a very challenging time. So that was kind of the beginning, and then Chet Helms, the family dog guy, decided because of that poster to come and ask me to do posters for him. And so I did a couple of little handbills for him, and then he wanted me to do the Fillmore poster he did, and that was the first family dog in the Fillmore poster, the Tribal Stomp. The artwork on that one, paper, printing, and everything was all for 60 bucks delivered to Chet. So he got like 300 posters for 60 bucks. Chet was a very, uh, he'd bring a picture or he'd have an idea for a poster, and which was sometimes good. And then a lot of times it wasn't too hot, you know, because it was real low budget, fast work. By that time I'd made his little logo for him. And I just did a little sketch on a scrap of paper one time. Said, That's good, you know, so I finished this little logo for him, which was the family dog, you know, and then there's this picture of this Indian that he really liked. So that became the logo on all the family dogs. But the first time it went on to a poster that had this banner. And he says, oh, Wes, I don't like this. You know, I said, this is not, I don't like it. You got to do another one. I said, I just did this one. I'm not going to do another one, you know, but I'll tell you what. You can come down to the shop tomorrow <laughs> and I'll show you how to do one. <laughs> but at the end of the day, they hadn't got the title. And so he said, well, Wes, could you please do one little thing for me? Just do the title, you know, that's still is considered kind of partly one of mine only because I did that and that was the first time that the uh, logo showed up on a family dog. My favorite of that era of family dog posters is probably the, the Paul Butterfield poster, which uh, he brought a picture of Bernard, Bernard McFadden and this guy is kind of going like this and you know, in, the, in this gesture, you know, of laughing and I turned it into the Paul Butterfield thing and used this black background and the white lettering, you know, which was a good thing to do with black and white because, you know, you don't have a lot of options. The Trips Festival in 1966, Handbill and Program, I did the program, and uh, Bruce Connor did the cover, you know, used his art on the cover. Bruce Connor had done these mandala, dark, really interesting drawing type things. The program was just typesetting, you know, it was very simple, very cheap. So I just pretty much just did it like a mechanical drawing and put these, this kind of interesting spiral thing in it. You know, they had the mime troops, they had the, the Grateful Dead were still the warlocks, I think, then. I mean, they funky, you know. And then uh, Quicksilver and those people, you know, and, the, and Big Brother, quite a group of people all, all got together for the rock music. And then Ken Kesey, of course with his spacesuit, the acid. It was a real maelstrom of talents and it was exciting, you know, and the lighting and that hall was rounded, you know, it was a Longshoreman's Hall. That was a special experience. When I first met Bill Graham, it was uh, when he was doing Mime Troop, uh, public relations, you know, after I did family dog posters, then Bill came one day and he said, would you do a poster for me at the Fillmore? You know, and I said, I sure, because I'm the freelance artist. And so he wanted me to do the Batman and he had the copy, a huge amount of copy he wanted on it. So I figured, okay, I'm gonna do this by hand, because I can do it by hand a lot easier. <laughs> and then to get Batman, I got a Batman comic book and just found a Batman and a Robin picture and kind of drew them in there, you know. In my Fillmore images, uh, women are important in, in any rock and roll context because they dance. Rock and roll is a beat, when the beat is movement. Everybody loves to see the movements of everybody dancing. and So that's why, like the sound poster, I came up with that nude, you know, because there's probably, you know, a well put together 
female figure is probably one of the more beautiful things on the planet. The body of work I did for the film were, looking back, I'm very proud of them and happy that I did them. There's some bombs, you know, like everybody does some that are good and some not so good. But uh, considering the circumstances, uh, very, very hard to do, that year was like really tough. It was like a campaign in some kind of jungle or something too at the same time and in dealing with the publicity, but it was something I'm very proud of and happy about. The most difficult poster I ever did was the one for the last Beatles concert. That was probably the most difficult poster I ever did because of the time frame and the fact that I was doing so many things at once. And so I had this great idea and, I'm, and I just finally at the end I had no time to finish it. So what I did was I just made the outside candlestick park, you know, with the ink brush. So it actually had the dates and where it was at. The association poster was uh, the the green and red, red lettering on the green field, the, the, one of my really brilliant ideas, which was simple because, again, it was time that determined the shape of it, and it just turned out really great. Later, the pressman called up and he said, oh, Wes, we're, we got on the press or anything, but the white, there's a white line around the lettering, you know, and he didn't know if he could go forward, you know, I had to approve it. And so then I said, well, look, uh, Ivor, what's it, what does it look like? You know, what do you think? He said, well, it's different. And he didn't like anything different. He was strictly the by the book type printer. And as he described it more, I realized, he says it's moving around and stuff, you know. I said, print it. You know? <laughs> that sounds cool. So I did. And then that turned out to be such a successful poster, just design-wise, that uh, MoMA in New York put it up on their wall and somebody told me it was there for years. The first joint show we had uh, was when the Big Five got together, we all got together with the Moore Gallery to put on this show. It turned out to be really a, one of the most successful shows ever in, in San Francisco. Over 3,000 people, I think it was reported, that went to the opening night. The joint show posters were done by each of us that were in the joint show, he did a poster. and. I also did the little invite that had the gatefold in it. The one that I did was, uh, had a little kind of poetry in it, you know, like, on the shores of the Western Sea, you know, S-E-E, -E, and uh, all these people's names in the poster, you know, it's kind of a thing. And uh, just a gal sitting in a window with the, you know, it was one of those things that I wish I'd spent more time on it because it was rushed, you know, unfortunately. It was a fun project, you know, that whole thing. And all the posters were printed in so many different ways and big, you know, on acetate, and metallics, and so forth that were kind of interesting. And in the joint show, there was uh, just virtual artwork, pretty much, that were connected with the posters. And then people got to see the, what the posters looked like in the process of being made, you know, the drawings to the print process and so forth. In fact, coming up with the name was kind of interesting because it had so many implications. There's the joint you smoke, there's the joint that's just something else, <laughs> and there's the joint being combined, you know. In 1989, um, got me back in the art world more. They had desktop publishing. I bought a little Macintosh, and I thought, wow, this is it. So I started off the wall did nine issues of it, which was event posters. They come off the wall. I like that kind of metaphor. The idea of creating events. And we put on uh, expos. I got in touch with people out here in the Bay Area. My golly, it, was, it took off. And now it's the, the expos are still going, and that's now the Rock Poster Society, which is, I'm glad people stepped forward for that. I first met Chris Shaw, the art director for Moon Alice, in 2005, doing the uh, Chet Memorial uh, poster. And then also, Roger played with the band. Then later, he asked me to do a Moon Alice poster. I think my ultimate favorite so far, the ones I've done, is the 421 that has the Indian in it. It wasn't too big a concept, you know, to, for me to deal with, and it was done the way I thought it ought to be done. The Sweetwater poster from Munalis, I should have done more of the lettering by hand at the bottom. I think the color of that one was very good. 
the Rose poster for Anne when she left the band. I had a, an ink accident that I was able to fix and then had to cut out a piece of it. But fortunately, because of the computer and everything, all the little cut lines gone, everything worked out really neat. But I like that one because it's the rose, you know, the yellow rose retired from her keyboard. The Moon Owl series is different than the other series of posters because it's uh, for every single event. There are posters done, it's just the energy that artists and fellow artists have when they work together or are part of a thing together. And this camaraderie that generates an interest that's, that exceeds just one person in isolation trying to do things as a freelance artist, you know. It's a community that's really involved in positive programs and positive art, has good goals, and it's a very happy bunch because of that. It just has a positive feeling about it which is the Moon Alice legend. I think it's a very positive le legend and it's kind of this metaphor for the improvement of the planet. It's a movement really for doing posters.